what I'm going to do here is going to show you how to directly solder an antenna to a video transmitter. And sometimes the reason to do this is because you want a lighter weight or it doesn't fit in the quad. For example, right now I'm building a uh, Bolt 180 and the SMA connector connected to the antenna and the transmitter just gets in the way of everything. I can't get it to fit. So I'm going to do something similar that I did. Uh, well, actually a buddy of mine did it and I, uh, I redid it when I broke the antenna to fit it in a uh, small quad that uh, didn't have any space for the SMA. Um, so it also is nice because it makes for a really lightweight setup and you don't go breaking these all the time. You just tie them down nicely. So this actually lasts a long time. Um, I don't know what's negative or positive, but the point is that the outside is a jacket and then the one pin in the center um, is, is, is that one in there. Whether it's positive or negative, I don't know. I'm not going to look it up. But the point is that um, if you see this one here, this is a Lumineer TX5 G6. It has the two outside there. Same thing here. And this little pin there, that's where the center of the antenna goes to. Unfortunately, uh, it's a tiny pad compared to what I have on this older one which has a much bigger pad to solder to. So this one's gonna be a little bit trickier. Not only are the side pads smaller, but the center one's even smaller. But this one shouldn't be a problem. It's just a little one at the center. I just have to line up real nice and just tag it. But the strength is gonna be held by the two outside ones. And what I'm, what I'm gonna do, since I cut the pins off from the SMA, I don't have those, so I'm gonna make a little rig, which is, this is basically just uh, wired without the insulation, twisted and just um, reinforced with, with with solder in the shape that I needed to be. And what I did was I went around and then this one around too, to make it stronger instead of just staying sticking to one side. <laughs> So this, I have this antenna perfectly well, we're pretty good. And um, I just cut this bit of uh, insulation there and you end up with this. So this is where it gets interesting because this is an expensive antenna and I am about to cut into it. What we'll do is just get as close as we can to this edge here. And we chop it off. And I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. So what we want to do is we want to peel back enough for the insulation so that the pin in the center is out enough, and then peel back enough of the insulation there to expose the other part, which um, means we're gonna have one part of the outer insulation and then the pin in the center. So we need to cut two sections off. So what we're gonna do first, is just start by cutting off enough to expose the pin. I don't need that much, so just a little bit. see now that's looking pretty good okay so now we only we're let's peel this off there it is let me clean it up a little bit more Okay, there we have it. So that bit will connect there. Go like this. Uh, 
There we go. And just hook that one up to there. Okay, so now we need to expose this bit without cutting the actual conductor. So all we gotta do is remove the red insulation to expose the aluminum below. deal okay so that part contacts those and those and the little pain in the center goes there so it goes just like that okay. so let's go ahead and make the wire part now all right so what I've done is I've taken 18 gauge cable uh, wire and I stripped it and removed the conductor then I twisted it and um, um, pretend it and then bend it into these two like U shapes. So what's going to happen is that's going to go like this. But to reinforce it, that one side goes to the other side and jumps over to this side and the other side does the same, goes around. All right, one thing I'd like to do with all the antennas is um, add this sort of mesh stuff and simply because this this insulation is nice but it tends to get pretty messed up and starts just getting out of here so i'd like to protect it first so i'm gonna go ahead and do that first i use three two one um shrink tubing so let's put that in there first Ah, it's fine. Let's just do it like that. Okay. Should be pretty good. The reason I use 3, 2, 1 is like I need it to be tight, but I also need to be able to stick it in there. So there we go. I like to use a little bit of CA to hold it in place. bit is enough. Okay. And then we can put this all the way in. And of course it doesn't fit. So let's stretch it out a little bit. So that one's all good. And we'll go ahead and do the other side, which should be a little bit shorter. So let me go ahead and cut this one. Should be about right. Yeah. What I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna slip this in. Oh, let me stretch it just to make it easier for me. Slip that in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to Pretty good. 
So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna stick an extra piece of this um, shrink tubing in there. And the reason I'm gonna do that is so that I have some shrink tubing just to cover that bit, which I didn't have for that one. I had to use electrical tape. But since I realize that now, I'm gonna do that this time. So I'm gonna slip that in here. I'm just gonna leave that up there for the time being. Oh shoot, this came loose. All right, that's fine. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna pull it over to CA to avoid that problem. Just do a little dab right there. All right, should be enough. All right. Sweet. So I should do it. Okay, so let's get to work. I'm almost ready. So I'm gonna put a little bit of flux on there to make it easier to work with. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack that little bit in the front, in the, the center bit. There. I think that's enough. This broad tip is probably a little bit broad for this bit, but for the rest is fine. I have a bunch of other tips, but this is gonna have to suffice. Cause I only have one soldering iron and I'm not gonna wait till it cools down. All right, here we go. All right, that should be enough. That one is just supposed to do contact. That one's not the reinforcement the outer ones are going to be the ones that reinforce the thing so these i'm going to have to be a lot more careful with so what i'm going to do is i'm going to attach those there so a little bit of flux there we go okay let's proceed All right, that looks good. Okay, you wanna let it cool down and turn it around. And we're back. All right, so we gotta do this side now. I'm gonna put that bit there. Okay, so this side um, has been trickier than I thought. I wasn't happy with how the thing, this wire thing that I made fit. Um, so I made another one and that one didn't quite fit right either So I'm just gonna try it with this one and I'm, I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually solder it on and then sort of push it down onto the antenna and hopefully That would do the trick Here we go Good. All right, so now it's just a matter of cooling it down a bit and soldering that part there after pushing it down a bit. So just give, give it a second. Okay, here we go, last few steps. So I went ahead and cleaned all the flux off it. Looks much nicer now. Looks pretty strong. 
So now it's just a matter of putting it all back together, putting it in the quad and testing it. I had to cut a tiny bit off the case here because it wouldn't fit um, because this is wider now, of course, but it should fit just in the case now. So we'll, I'll show you in a second. There I added the shrink wrap, the shrink tubing. And even though that's obviously ground, I didn't know what it was earlier, but such is the case, so it's definitely ground. It just looks clean like this. And there we have it. It's done, and it fit the case ni nicely. I had to cut that bit there and that bit there, but it fit the case, so it'll have a nice heat sink. I'm gonna probably attach one of these to there or to there because this thing gets really hot. But there it is. So now the little brat that wouldn't fit before will fit back here. Take this thing off. That'll fit back here. Well, I have to remove that stand off first, but it'll fit there and this antenna will come out here. Before, the SMA connector was too thick to fit between those two standoffs and too long. So now it'll fit there just fine. And then I bend the antenna up. So that's pretty much it. Also, another benefit is that I lost 10 uh, grams. Because uh, these things, you got, these things are pretty heavy. You got this, and then you have that one so between these I think there's about 10 grams here I, I know I have weighted but yeah so you lose weight and also the antenna's a little bit shorter you know we don't need it to be very long so I really like this it's a bit of a pain and I don't usually do it unless I have to and for this build I had to so there we go how to solder uh, an FPV 5.8 antenna to, straight to the transmitter